Junior Rodeo Daredevils. I have a new episode of Comic Reviews, and this episode is obviously brought to you by my own comic book, Red Knight. I self-publish it. I think it's pretty good, uh, and it's uh, three bucks a piece, uh, two for shipping, and I, U.S. International. We can talk, but uh, I will be setting up an Etsy shop for this very soon, uh, so watch for updates. And issue four is about to come out this week. Anyway, now to uh, the big guns. Uh, issue, where are we now in Daredevil? 14 of Daredevil, Mark Wade, and let's see, what's the artist on this one? Uh, Chris Sinead, Chris and all right, well, Matt Murdock thought he got out of uh, the woods there by handing over that uh, disc with all the mega crime information uh, to the Avengers, and he was teleported, kidnapped by uh, Doctor Doom. Now, uh, while he's in prison, he's sprayed with this gas uh, and then released. He feels like, uh, he's worried, like, what was that? While he's trying to escape, he quickly starts realizing what it was. It was a gas that's been deadening his senses, so he's literally losing them one by one. Uh, and uh, the last sense he has is his radar sense. I mean, he can't feel and taste and touch uh, any more by the end of this. Um, and what's interesting is Dr. Doom isn't in this issue. Uh, his people have kidnapped him uh, under his orders. And that's what's interesting about Dr. Doom is he's such a powerful character. He doesn't even have to be in the issue in order to fight the character. He, he, his country is basically fighting Daredevil in this. Uh, we actually get a good tour of the city as he's trying to get out of it. It's not a, uh, excuse me, the country as he's trying to get out of it. And the cliffhanger is heart-wrenching, I gotta say. Uh, five Ram Chips, uh, best Marvel book, best book right now. Uh, pick it up. Now, my second favorite comic is Glory. This is issue 27. And it's by uh, Joe Keenich, uh, Keenich and Ross Campbell uh, doing the art. And uh, as I think what's become the norm is we get a flashback or even flash forward uh, to, uh, you know, kind of give us a little bit more of an understanding of the, the universe that uh, we're in here. And we get a childhood uh, memory of uh, Glory and her uh, losing control uh, during just standard, you know, kid tantrum, nearly killing another child. Uh, and her uh, mother is the only one that, you know, keeps her from actually killing, like, a little friend of hers. Uh, what's interesting is it really does feel... It really does... It, it, they're, they're, it's really humane, the way uh, she's kind of savage and evil here, and then she's caught, and that look on her face is really kind of, like, very obvious childlike. Um... Well, cut to that, to the invasion of the, uh, the island that they've been on for, uh, for quite some time. They're on an island near uh, France, actually. And uh, they're attacked by, apparently, her father's uh, minions. Uh, they're beasties all over the place. Um, let's see. And Riley and Henry are uh, doing their best to escape, but he has to go really monster on uh, a lot of beasties in order to uh, help her escape. Uh, and boy, 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 this whole issue is just savage fighting all the way through. Um, and I, Ross Campbell, uh, I followed Ross Campbell on his uh, Twitter, and he said this is his favorite panel he's ever drawn, is this shot of Glory biting off someone's face. <laughs> I don't think Wonder Woman has done that yet. Um, wow, what a killer, killer issue. And it ends also with another like slap in the face kind of uh, cliffhanger uh, where uh, Riley is told, you know, what the invasion's all about. What a great comic. Uh, I highly recommend this. Now, more people are buying Daredevil, so I, but I still keep feeling like I should tell you to buy Daredevil. Um, really check this out. I don't care what anybody says about Rob Liefeld. This is a great book. This is a terrific book. Highly recommend it. Five Ram Chips. And... I have gotten back into Turtles, motherfucker. Here is issues 10 and 11 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And it is by 
uh, a whole bunch of people. Kevin Eastman, one of the creators, is actually on this book. He, uh, he's been writing the storyline with Tom Waltz, and uh, Tom Waltz has been doing the script. Dan Duncan has been doing the art uh, with occasional... Uh, actually, it has a bunch of covers. With IDW, IDW seems to do multi-covers on everything. And uh, one of the artists doing the covers is uh, Eastman himself, and uh, you know these these are by him. Uh, the other colors, the other co excuse me, the other covers look great, but you know I want the Eastman covers. This this guy who created the fucking thing in the first place. I want those. Um, now to recap, this is sort of like uh, a reboot of the whole series. It doesn't have it doesn't seem to have any continuity uh, with the previous versions of uh, the Turtles, which is fine with me. This is this is a new uh, company. Why don't, why don't we just start it fresh? And the uh, first meeting, apparently, of uh, Splinter and Shredder. And uh, Splinter has been kidnapped by the foot, and uh, they're kind of doing this whole induct you into our group. We're going to see if you're you know, tough enough. Uh, so he takes on, like, uh, guy after guy, and uh, his female number two here. Uh, meanwhile, the turtles are trying to figure out what the hell to do. Uh, they don't know where he is, so they're kind of like stuck, and uh, they kind of like they have nowhere to go too. So they uh, they decide to hang out in April's abandoned uh, store here, uh, trying to figure out. And in issue eleven, the uh, the fight gets more intense as uh, Splinter takes on. You know, maybe Splinter doesn't need to be rescued. He's kind of kicking the shit out of everyone uh, as the Turtles are trying to figure out in vain what to do. At the end of this issue, they uh, do hook up with uh, some street gang members who have been uh, very, very upset about the uh, apparent number of mutants uh, that are attacking uh, various people in the city. Uh, the art is just wonderful by Duncan. And uh, at the end of this one, they decide to go, uh, go rescue Splinter uh, while Splinter and Shredder decide to go against each other. So that's what's uh, spare, uh, uh, shaping up for this uh, storyline. Uh, I've been digging this a lot, and I've never been a huge Turtles guy, but, you know, because mainly I was like uh, in my late teens when that thing kind of exploded, and, um, you know, I remember the original black and white ones, um, and it always struck me so weird how big it got. I, I don't know. It, it's always kept its uh, independent feeling no matter what, which is hilarious. I, uh, kudos to them. Uh, I'm going to give these two a very strong four Ram chips. Uh, if you're a Turtles fan or if you've always been curious about the Turtles like me, uh, pick it up. This is a pretty good series so far. Uh, big crossover kooky fun is the Avengers X-Men storyline. This is issue six. And uh, everybody who writes for Marvel is writing this. So uh, Jason Aaron, Brian Michael Bendis, Ed Brubaker, Matt Fraction, and Jonathan Hickman. Jonathan Hickman is doing the script for this one. That's kind of the way they've been breaking it down. Like, uh, all those guys have been uh, put together the story and each take a turn uh, at the script, which is not a bad idea. Uh, John Romita Jr. has been doing the art up until now, uh, but now it's uh, Olivia Coppell uh, doing the art, and I love his work, actually. And now, last we left our uh, Marvel Universe, uh, the Avengers figured out a weapon to take on the Phoenix, uh, force and before it took possession of hope Tony Stark uh, Iron Man was able to hit it with everything he had and instead of destroying it it's energy so it just split and it in uh, it, it ended up possessing the various members of the X-Men that were there uh, so you know instead of hope it's taken uh, charge of like uh, well uh, melded or taken possession or I don't know whatever that because they're still kind of them uh, of Cyclops and uh, Namor and Magic and Emma Frost and uh, Colossus. And they have, instead, it, the issue ended with an ominous shot of them heading back towards Earth and you think, oh boy, they're fuck up Earth. But no, they've gone actually back to their mission, trying to improve uh, the world. Uh, Professor X shows up at... Um, at uh, the Utopia Island, and he's greeted by Magneto, who is, I guess, been reduced to being Cyclops's greeter, uh, which, you know, he's old enough to be that. So, I don't think he gave him any smiley face stickers, though. Total fucking bastard. Um, anyway, 
he has a meeting with uh, Cyclops, and he's kind of concerned with what he's doing. Uh, and they're all over, just fixing the world, uh, which like sounds like a good idea. But uh, Professor X and the Avengers are really concerned about this. Like you know, uh, it's this philosophy of every time there's been a step forward in uh, human evolution, um, whether it's like natural physical evolution uh, or or just uh, society as a culture, uh, there's been suffrage there there has been uh kind of sacrifice uh it, it it's it, it change like big major change for the better has never come easy without a price and that's what they're concerned about here that you know it's like great but you know uh there's there's nothing we had to do for this and you know we see them like going all over here uh, and that's when that's something I've really liked about this storyline is it does seem like it is kind of digging deeper into uh, the philosophy of you know you know what it is to you know really change the world for the better and uh, lots of cool stuff here. I'm not going to give too much away about the ending, but the Scarlet Witch, uh, after being hinted that she's going to be a major player, finally makes a move. Uh, really dug this. I've uh, been enjoying this miniseries so far. Uh, I haven't been reading any of the uh, extra books. I've only been reading the Avengers titles that I don't really read anyway. Uh, and they've been good. Um, this is going to be five ramp chips. I really dug this. And, oh, two more. X Factor 238 by Peter David. And who's the artist on this? Paul Davidson. Uh, I like, X Factor seems to be the only book that does this, where it, ca it catches you up on what's going on with the title, and then... Uh, catches you up with what's going on with the writer's life, Peter David. Uh, like, uh, he's talked about, uh, you know, his, uh, let's see, in this issue, uh, Peter David's uh, eldest daughter, Shanna, uh, along with her husband, Tim, have started up their own movie theater in Jacksonville, Florida. I mean, that's hilarious. I love it. Uh, that really does make it feel like almost like an indie book, really. I mean, I don't even do that. Um, but uh, there's this character somewhat like the Banshee, killing people. So, obviously, that makes uh, Banshee uh, a lead suspect. So, uh, you know, Havoc and uh, Maddox uh, are investigating that, and they're also investigating the uh, apparent suicide of that other character uh, from uh, last month's issue. Was it last month? I think it was last month. Uh, meanwhile, Rain is going on a quest to find her son, uh, the one she abandoned uh, a long time ago. She's going with Shatterstar and Richter. Uh, also, the art, let's see, there's not really any action in this issue, but it's handled very well. Uh, and, you know, it's really lovely work, by the way. Um, I like issues like this, the small stuff issues, where you get a lot of character. And, uh, you know, this is kind of, you know, this, it's nice to actually feel like you're in the world. And I like issues like this a lot. Uh, this is Five Ram Chips. I'm so glad to be reading Peter David again. I haven't read one of his titles in a while. And this is quite wonderful, Five Ram Chips. Uh, and lastly, I got uh, Captain America. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've jumped back onto the whole Captain America thing. Um, I was really happy because what I thought was when Captain America Steve Rogers came back that Ed Brubaker was going to be done with it and go on. But to my surprise, he's actually stayed with Bucky. I guess, I guess thankfully he has new things to say with the character. So, uh, this is issue 13, uh, Brubaker and... Who's the artist on this? Uh, Patch uh, Zyker. Zucker, uh, whose work looks a little like Ron Garney's, actually, uh, from time to time. A uh, uh, wonderful little scene where uh, Cap has gone to rescue a guy who actually thinks he's <laughs> there to capture him, but it turns out he's saving his own life. Uh, and, let's see, it's about, basically, this storyline is in, uh, about the new Scourge, who is uh, killing uh, baddies left and right, uh, and it looks like he is been, uh, let's see, he is the, uh, sort of been possessed by, uh, or mind washed, excuse me, this is not possession, uh, brainwashed by, uh, Henry Guyrich, and, uh, Guyrich is such an asshole, and, uh, but is he being controlled too? Who knows? Well, I mean, you know, the writers do, because they made it up. Uh, wonderful little stuff, I love all, you know, this is, this is what I really like about Captain America a lot, is this, this kind of espionage, superhero mix, and 
kind of done fairly in the real world uh, and really has a real modern espionage kind of uh, feel to it. I've uh, been digging this a lot. I'm going to give this five round chips. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Well, I think that's it for now, so push the button, Lindsay.